Hello there, you magnificent, beautiful creature. How you doing? Have you been eating well? Taking care of yourself? Yeah, physically, emotionally, mentally? All those things are very important to be aware of and to be conscious of. Uh, before we get into things, let me just say that this video is sponsored by Skillshare, and it's a learning community that I use a lot in my professional life and in my personal life, and we'll talk about that towards the end, but that to the side, hi there. Uh, I'm gonna start this off like I usually do, which is that I've been gone for a while. It has been quite a while. Uh, and again, I do apologize. I apologize every single time. I'm gonna make a video more in depth about this feeling that I have that I'm sure is not unique to me, and that is imposter syndrome. And the next vlog, which will hopefully come out a few days after this one, will be all about that, because that's what I've been dealing with, but that is neither here nor there. We'll get into that again later. What I want to do today is something that I tweeted about, oh, in June, I think, which was uh, I was gonna do a Q&A questions and answers, and I didn't do it, and that is my fault, and I apologize. I kind of spent, let's just chat for a second before we get into the hubbub of Q&As, shall we? I spent the past couple months not really using social media, be it Twitter, or Instagram, or even YouTube, uh, and it's because I've, I've felt, well, I've been really invested, back to our three things, emotionally, physically, and mentally, in System, Could You Survive the Movies, which is coming out soon, we're almost at the end of it, and I just haven't had space to, to focus on anything else, and that's been very difficult for me. I, I felt very fulfilled, but also unfulfilled, because there was parts of me that I didn't get to express and share, and that's what this channel, that's what social media is for, right? We've discussed this numerous times, that it's an avenue to share and show different sides of you, different pieces of you, and hopefully they all come together to make a full picture, uh, or at least a partially formed picture. Maybe I'll be tweeting again and Instagramming again, so if you feel the need, you can follow me on those. It's just at Jake Rar. As iDubs has pointed out numerous times, the Rar is a little bit rar. It's a little, uh, you know, scene kid, but I did make it when I was a young boy. So here we are. Anyway, let's do a Q&A, because there were some really, really fantastic questions that I feel really bad that I haven't answered yet, but I am going to right now. So let's do that, shall we? So Fosnier asks, would you live on Mars if given the opportunity? No. Let me say that I do think we should go to Mars, and I think it would be very interesting for a scientific level to go. I don't particularly want to go because currently as it stands, it would most likely be a one-way trip. I very much enjoy my time here on Earth for the most part, so I, I wouldn't want to go, and also I think that would be a waste. I'm not a scientist, I'm not an astronaut, I don't think I would do the best there. We need people, you know, who are in essence sacrificing themselves for knowledge, for science and they will have a much better background and expertise than I would. Oh, I burped, sorry, I ate Taco Bell earlier. I love the TB. Taco Bell, not tuberculosis. I don't particularly care for tuberculosis. Anywho, let's go to a different question. This one I know far too well, Ibichan. How to deal with lack of motivation. Here's the thing, I generally have to motivate myself, and what I use to motivate me, my favorite thing, is when people tell me that I can't do something. That motivates me even further to do it, because I love proving people wrong. And I take that own approach in my content because I am my biggest critic. You always are, generally. Like, you're the person who is the most critical, has the most comments, the most opposite viewpoints of yourself when you're making something. So my main motivator is, is me. I feel like if I don't do things, then I'm failing myself. And if I do do things, well, then I'm not doing it well enough. So I keep pushing and I keep trying, and it's always the hardest part is getting over yourself. Ooh, Occult Alien, top three favorite books of all time, any genre, even from childhood, LOL. Uh, <clears throat> so I have a weird selection. One would be American Psycho. I think it's a wonderful book because the, the amount of description that Brett Easton Ellis goes into is just so amazing. Like it just goes on forever, just discussing like the entree that's in front of our lead character. And I love that. There's obviously all the violence too, but I think it's, I think it's funny. I think it's wonderful to have this juxtaposition of brutal violence with observing the mundane. One that I love a lot is uh, Gulp by Mary Roach. It's a science book about digestion and food. That book is one of my favorite science books ever because Mary makes things so interesting and so fun and so quirky and she does such a great job and you learn so much but you also laugh and I really love that. A third book, oh boy howdy. I'm just gonna throw in a graphic novel. Swamp Thing is one of my favorites and the run by Alan Moore when he did it is one of my favorite comics ever. The way it deals with humanity and what it means to be human and what it means to have a self, I think, is just so 
beautiful and the art is gorgeous and it, it feels like it feels like a work of art. Ooh, sweater stripes. What have you wanted to learn most but haven't had the time? I want to learn the most languages and I want to learn most instruments. That's something if I had time, one day when I retire, which will be never, but let's just imagine that I do, I want to just start taking music lessons. I want to learn cello. I want to get better at piano. And by better, I mean better than what I learned when I was like between the ages of eight and nine and 10. Whoa, hey, hey, I'm a Beethoven. That to me is, is interesting. Facts are fun, but being able to use language or music to create sounds very exciting to me. Johnny Bones Bosworth, Johnny Bosworth. How do you find balance with all the things you want to do? Work, hobbies, relationship, etc. This is a great question because I had a lot of difficulty with this and I, again, am probably not alone in this feeling or experience where when I first started doing Vsauce, I let that consume everything. I was making like a video every five days. I didn't have time for my friends or for whoever I was in a relationship with at that time. I just wanted to do that. And everything else fell by the wayside. And then slowly over time, I started rebuilding those relationships because they are valuable and important. And now I've realized that I still want to give a project to everything I have, but I also need to find time for those in my life that are not work. For those that create relationships by communication, by spending time with each other. And that's something that I'm, I'm slowly, but surely getting better at. So how do you find time? I'm a strong believer that there is always time for things that are important for you, or important to you, should I say. I take on a lot of work, I take a lot of responsibilities because they are important to me. And I know that mentally I can figure out how I can compartmentalize everything and organize it so I can still spend time with my family, with my friends, with my girlfriend, but also still focus on work and do that to the best of my ability. Okay, dreadful gnome. Good name. Hardest part of your job? The hardest part of my job is me, I think. I, I wish I wasn't so hard on myself. Uh, that is the hardest part. Because, you know, I think you get to a point where when you're making things for an audience, and if you're lucky enough to have an audience, it's hard to, to do it, not because there's people expecting you to make things, because generally, like, even when I'm like, hey, I'm not gonna make something for a while, the audience, you, I was like, oh, take your time. But I feel like I shouldn't. I feel like I need to make things all the time, and if I don't, then I'm a failure, and I'm failing everybody, and I'm garbage. And so that, to me, is the hardest part of, <clears throat> I'm not crying, I just, I think there's a tomato in the back of my throat. Villa Mediana, what is your favorite anime? Easy. Cowboy Bebop. There's one episode in particular where Spike is falling through a uh, stained glass window in a church. And the, the music's like, Mary Mantra, da, 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 da. And for some reason, that section, that segment of that one episode is something I'll rewatch over and over again because it's so beautiful, it's so emotional that I, I just, I love it. I love watching it to, to kind of help motivate myself to keep making things. Like I need those little motivators. That's why I have make on my wrist and I rewatch a lot of sections, like an old boy, original Korean one, not the remake, when Odesu um, finally at the end confronts this person who's been tormenting him and their interaction, I'll watch that all the time. And I, I'll be honest, I, I tear up a little bit because of how masterfully that story has been told and everything that led up to that point, the way that it's filmed, the music, the sound, like it's just, ugh. I don't remember what the question was anymore. Now I'm just thinking about old boy. I love that movie. Karo G. Carrillo. What are your thoughts on veganism? Here are my thoughts on people's diets. They do not involve me or affect me, so you do whatever you want as long as it makes you happy and you're healthy doing it and it doesn't hurt others. That's my feeling. I was raised vegetarian. The first 18 years of my life, I was vegetarian. When I went to college, my way of rebelling, hey, hey, take it, mom and dad, was I started eating uh, meat. If you like it, if you think it works for you and you enjoy it, do it. I love it. That's great. I love that there's things like Beyond Meat and Impossible. That's fantastic, there's more options. When I was a kid growing up, there was really not much. I couldn't even eat Oreos. Oreos had animal fat in the cream filling. A lot of the Doritos I couldn't eat because they had like pepperoni dust. When it comes to any life choice that you want, as long as it doesn't hurt others, do it, be proud of it. It's, it's you, it's what you wanna do. Who cares what other people say? Live your life, because you're the only one living it. Self-help by Jake Rover. Wake up Jeff, how do you get through high school honestly? because you get through it. It doesn't last forever, it's four years and then you move on with your life and so does everybody else. It's not forever, it is a period of time and in the length of your time, if we look at a timeline, it is a small blip, a blink. And it's hard when you're going through it, but once you're done, it's done. It's in the rear view mirror and you don't even have to look back there if you don't want to, you can just keep driving forward because it's an open road and there's no other traffic. Don't worry about it. it. Happens, you move on, everyone who was mean to you 
People made fun of you, they go away. But at the end of the day, it's an experience and you learn from it. Nobody knows who they are in high school. You're growing, you're changing. I would look at kids that were in college like, ah, they got it figured out, they don't. When I was like 16, like, ah, oh, my parents got it figured out, they didn't. They acted like they did, but they didn't. They had questions and concerns, and am I doing this right? And when you're in high school, you don't know what's going on either. Nobody does. So you keep growing, you keep moving forward, you keep learning, and you keep hoping that everything's going to figure itself out, and if not, you're just gonna keep doing it until you get there. So there you go. You know, one thing that I just, I'm seeing a lot as I go through these tweet responses, which again, thank you so much for, for asking questions, is just how do you, you know, make things, what did you do that led to where you are now? And this all revolves around creativity, which actually transitions very well into Skillshare, which we'll get to in one moment. I've always wanted to create things. I've always wanted to make things. That, if we talk about motivation, has been my motivation because it's the only way that I can really honestly express myself. You know, I, I find it very easy to talk to you because I'm talking to an inanimate object. Like, yes, on the other side of that, there is a human being, or at least I hope you are. You might be a penguin, which in that case, hello. I guess that's me pinching a penguin's cheek. Anyway, and I find it the same way when I'm trying to do a Vsauce 3 video. I can express who I am, what I think, what I like, how I want to be thought of and remembered through through cameras. And it's not just being in front of them. I went to school for directing. Well, actually I didn't. I went to school for cinematography because I wanted to be able to tell stories with light, with lenses, with the way that the camera moves through a scene, the way that the character moves with it. That to me was this beautiful ballet and I, I loved that. That makes me feel whole, it's therapeutic. And with that, and this is where we get into the Skillshare, the branded part of the episode. And Truth be told, I, I do use Skillshare. I've had an account for, I don't know, two, three years now. I love Skillshare because I don't know everything. I mean, that's what a lot of us use YouTube for, is like learning things for tutorials, for just learning information from videos like Vsauce, things like that. And Skillshare is a really great place to learn. I've talked about it before in videos. I've done like the audio mixing thing, so my audio will sound better in videos. Uh, I've done color grading, so I actually can make the videos look the way that I want them to. And one that I'm actually doing now is DIY cinematography. That one is, I, I think, a great course because it tells you how to make a lot with a little. And that's what YouTube creation is. I mean, right now the setup is camera here, microphone here, there's one light there, one light back there. This camera happens to be very nice and these lights are relatively nice. But before this, if you go to my very first Vsauce 3 videos, it was like a Canon DSLR and whatever lights I could find. I mean, one thing we use a lot for lighting are these work lights. These things are great. You can get them for like super cheap at Lowe's or whatever home improvement store you have. And you can use them, put like a little bit of diffusion over them, you know, and just make it look softer, however you want. So anyway, this DIY cinematography course is really, really interesting. And my favorite thing to do is always to surprise people with how shots were done. And this kind of gives you insight and hopefully motivates you to do it. So if you want, you can go to the link at the top of the description to get two months of premium free. And a whole premium subscription in general is less than $10 a month. And I really do think Skillshare is incredible. It's a great learning tool for me to help make the things that I make better. So definitely check it out if you want. Thank you Skillshare for sponsoring this episode and for being the first contributor of the Brands Help Jake Pay for His Mortgage. We really appreciate having you. Uh, Skillshare down there, I love you. I'm gonna start uh, posting on things more because I think that is important. It's a great way for me to get what's in here out there. And uh, yeah, that's all I got for you. But I have one more thing, remember. It's not goodbye. Oh no. It's never goodbye. It's...